Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Money Talk. It's me, Jonathan, and I can't wait to talk to you in this video. So, one of the best things I like about being a financial coach is helping people start their budget. And today, that's what we're going to actually talk about in this video. But first, if this is your first time joining me here on the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you're notified when I upload new videos. So, number one, I want you to actually sit down and think about why you're actually starting to budget. What really kicked it off for you? Typically, when you're starting to budget, you're really starting to understand, hey, there's something you want to get. And that is going to be your number one. That's going to be your goal. You are trying to write down a couple things that you want to focus your money on and get accomplished. So the budget really works well when you have goals that you're really striving for. Whether it's, I just want to vacation a little bit more, maybe go out to eat a little bit more, buy some clothes, you have a car you need to pay for in the next couple years, or you're buying a house soon. Whatever it is that you're trying to save for or do with your money, that is important for your budget. It helps you really start to make decisions, make good financial decisions, and know how to set the correct boundaries in place. So... Number one, I want you to actually set some goals. Now, you may be trying to think about, hey, I realized going through all this chaos, I need to have some cash. You're right. That's a very, very important goal. And it can make it tough to try to survive financially if you don't have any cash in the bank. So I would say before anything else, try to get you at least two months worth of cash, maybe $2,000, $2,500 set aside in a bank account so that you're able to feel some release. No, it's not enough, but it's a good start point to get you started. Eventually, you definitely want to get towards that three to six month worth of expenses. And that's really a good, healthy emergency fund to have cash on hand. Number two, it's actually the meat of what you're doing when you start to sit down and do this budget. Uh, you're going to actually write down everything. So the budget, it accounts for every dollar that you spend and that you're planning to spend. So you shouldn't have to second guess where your money's going or what is it doing or what are you being charged because you should know in a about a sheet wide worth of paper where you can actually look whether it's an app, whether it's Excel sheet, whether it's any type of site that you're using, you can see it at with one glance that, hey, this is where my money is going next month. The good thing about this budget is no one's giving this to you. Now, yes, some of your expenses are already kind of predetermined, but you have autonomy in pretty much every expense that you have. So if you don't like what you're paying in rent, you get to move. If you don't like what you're paying for a car, you can sell it. If you don't like that you're paying for Netflix and Hulu and Disney Plus and all these different things, you get to cancel it. So you're not bound with money in every scenario. Now, yes, it's a lot oftentimes easier to get into things than it is to get out. But I want you to understand with your budget, you can start to recognize, hey, where am I actually spending my money? Why, how am I actually going to move myself forward? So this number two, where you're actually writing it down, I want you to start to look through, write down from mortgage to utilities, gas uh, for your house, gas for your car, all your expenses. I want you to actually list out each debt separately. So if you have student loans, if you have credit cards, if you have a car loan, I want you to list each one of those line by line by each other. The purpose for this is so that later on, as you're going through budgeting and as you're shifting your money around, you'll be able to quickly see how you can make progress and make your budget move a lot faster to free up cash. So it's very important that you're able to see what you're paying on each credit card, what you're paying on your car loan, what the balances are. All these things are important. And lastly, before I move on to the next point, I want you to set aside some money, especially for yourself to spend throughout the month. The reason for this is if you budget the whole month and you have not spent any money or given yourself any margin to spend money to where 
it's no judgment. You can do whatever you want with it. So if you want to go to happy hour with it, you can go to happy hour with it. If you want to take a trip, you can take a trip. If you want to buy something, you can buy something. But the point is, this budget should actually give you room to where you can actually spend your money, but not at the sacrifice of, not, of what's doing what's important for you. So it's important that you understand that it, your budget is not about being responsible all the time. It is about planning your irresponsibility. And that's the point that I want you to understand. You give yourself grace to, hey, if it's 150 bucks a month or $200 a month, to go spend some money. And you may spend it and it may actually not be a good buy. But the fact is, you spending that money did not affect you reaching your, the financial goals that are important. And that's what's most important, and that's the reason for the budget. So you can account for every dollar. The second piece of actually writing down where your money is going, I want you to actually start to try to see where you can group things together so that you can understand, hey, am I spending a lot in utilities? Am I spending a lot in uh, insurance? Am I spending a lot in debt? You need to understand what you're spending your money on so that you can know how you can make progress. And then you also need to know what you're spending your money on so that when you get more money, you know exactly where you need to be spending it at. So that's most important. And a good way to understand like, hey, I don't really know what I spend in a month on gas or I don't really know what I'm spending on certain items. That's where I want you to reference and kind of gather some data from your bank accounts or statements and things of that nature. Because the important thing is you want your budget to be as accurate as possible. Now, after you've done this for some time, you'll actually be able to forecast and guesstimate and kind of ballpark it yourself. But when you're first starting, you want to try to gather that data as accurate as possible. Number three, I want you then to start to look at how you break up your budget in the form of payments. So most people get paid two times a month, bi-weekly, or however you get paid. I want you to line up your budget, the due dates of what things are due with when you get paid. The very, very important piece of this is if you're paid weekly or if you're paid bi-weekly, you know what needs to be paid on what paycheck. The second value is if you're saving money or if there's money missing in the month, you'll actually be able to quickly understand where that money is missing and how you're kind of running over it. So this is a good portion where I want you to understand that what I have a lot of clients do is try to balance it out. You want things to be kind of 50-50. So if you have $500 left over in the month, I want you to balance and try to change your due dates and see who will actually work with you to get those due dates changed to where you can balance out where each check you've got 250 that you know you can go in and pull it out. That's very important because that puts the action behind the visual. It's not no longer on paper that, oh, there's $500 missing. Here. No, you get to go take it out each pay period so you know where that money is. That's very important and it's very empowering to do. Next, I want you to evaluate after you've gotten everything grouped up and got your, your pay dates all set, I want you to evaluate kind of where you're spending your money and see is it really necessary or is there possibly a more frugal way for you to go about some of these services. I will tell you, auto insurance is something that you have to constantly reevaluate and validate all the time. The reason for it is those rates for auto loans fluctuate so much. So it's very important for you to realize what are you overspending on or could you possibly overspend it? Now, typically you can do this online by just using your regular insurance page and that can get a discount. But if you need to save time, try to find an auto insurance agent that will shop multiple carriers for you. That's usually called an independent agent. But they will shop multiple carriers to make sure you're getting the best deal. Typically that works out for you. And it's a way for you to kind of set that activity and delegate that responsibility out and kind of little, be, little bit be on autopilot. Also, 
Look at your phone carrier. Look at your insurance. Look at um, all these streaming services. Are you paying too much for these things? Or are you overpaying for something that you're not using? These are things that you have to evaluate as you start to weigh what you're doing against where you're trying to go, the goals. Remember, this is the reason why you're doing it and your goals will change. So as you start to make progress, maybe that's something you pick up later. But when you're really off and running and you're trying to get things going and this is your first time, you have to start to reevaluate what type of spending decisions you have made. Next, I want you to start to look at how can you get around the community. Now, Money Talks is all about meeting you where you are. And one of the things that I've tried to do to try to support you on your journey is I have a Facebook group called Money Talks where you can actually join, get your customers answered, but most importantly, you're in a community of people that are building their budgets, working through their finances, working, talking with spouses or switching jobs or finding new jobs or finding a way to be frugal or finding a way to save money or starting to invest. All different types of things are going on in this group. But the point is for you to have a space where there are people that are doing the same thing you're doing, really focusing in on their finances, trying to learn, trying to grow, trying to get better, and you don't have to feel so isolated. It's very important that you understand that you have to be around people that are going to encourage you on this journey. I'm not saying get rid of your friends. I'm saying add people in your life that are budgeting, have people on your, in your life that will encourage you along the journey, but also hold you accountable on the journey. Sometimes our friends, they're not going to budget. I know for me, that's what happened. And so I had to get around some friends that actually budget and thought finances were important. And that's what they were for, focused on. And that helped me so I didn't get so isolated in this journey. Because if you do, you will fall off track. Lastly, I want you to actually really think about this but the funny piece is you have to do it the very last thing you have to do is you have to do and commit to actually doing the budget you have to do it at least once before the month begins to make progress this is the only way you will make progress now the good thing about the budget is as soon as you do it you will again feel like you've already made progress because you'll see Maybe there's extra money. Likely there will be. Most people, in most cases, they're extra money. And so you'll feel empowered. You'll feel like you got a raise. You'll, you'll feel like, oh man, I'm not doing as bad as I think you are. And that can give you confidence. But as you do this budget more and do it month after month, before the month begins, you will start to learn that you have more money and because you're making more sound decisions, your money is going further for you but not the, at the expense of you not having and enjoying the life that you have now. And I think that's most important. You want to enjoy your life. And it's not saying, but you can enjoy your life and also accomplish your financial goals. You don't have to choose. I want to encourage you in that fact. Also, before I let you go on this video, and I'm glad you stuck with me to the end, I want to take a moment to wish the most important lady in my life or actually one of the most important ladies in my life, my mom, a happy birthday. So happy birthday, mom. And I'll see you guys in the next video.